Hey guys, making another recording here, and it is 7 in the morning. I woke up not too long ago. Okay, so, continuing the recording, I just played it back to see if it was playing the audio at all, but it is, so, anyway, um, it is recording, but hopefully it's going to be loud enough. I tried a lot of different things, and um, I can raise the volumes and the editing and stuff if I have to. I don't know why, you know, I have to be like right into the mic to talk, but I can't, I don't want to do that all the time. So I have this wireless microphone too that uh, was donated to me a while back, and I finally got around to trying this, and it works really good, um, but it's, no matter what microphone I use on here and I record, it's like the volume's low, so... But I really wanted that to try with the hand camera, so maybe I'll try that later too. But with the computer and everything, it works great, so that's awesome. I've got so many different microphones, but this one has like an amp. This is kind of like my highest quality microphone. And I had like an arm for this to where I could have it in front of me all the time, but that broke. So maybe I'll have to invest in that, get a new arm, but... Either way, like when I'm reading the Bible, this is going to have to be to the side or something. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to talk like loud just to, to record it right. I should be able to record it in my regular voice, my regular volume. But I am going to be drinking a little bit of coffee as I'm recording this because, like I said, I just woke up. So, But for this video, I'm just going to go over... Proverbs 22. Just continue on with that. See if there's any verses that stick out to me that I can look more into later. Like I said, uh, how I highlighted it. I highlighted a lot of the parts that have to do with money or whatever in green. And so I can see that that's going to be coming up in a lot of that. I don't know what that BP was. I think my mom might have read that. She had this Bible for me. But I forgot to mention that. So, when I uploaded the last video, it took like literally like all day while I was at work. Like 8, 9, 10 hours to upload, which is completely ridiculous. So, I'm trying a different video recorder. I'm trying Screencast-O-Matic, which is something I used in the past. And they charge a fee... And it's only like $20 for a year, so I went ahead and charged that again. I quit using it because I have... One of the reasons to use Screencast-O-Matic is to record, to capture the screen. And so I could show like the King James app, and I can show you the verses as I'm reading it, or just talking about websites or whatever, and showing the websites it makes it really easy. But I remember recording like regular webcam footage from it too, and it uploaded pretty fast. And so uh, I'm going to try this and see how this works. Plus it has its own kind of built-in editor too. So, um, <clears throat> so if I put this video in my normal editor and, and do it, and it still takes like forever to load, then I'll try to use its built-in editor and blah 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 but like what I'm saying is that I'm experimenting hopefully the first time I do this record this video and edit the way I want to and upload it it will upload fine and hopefully it'll just be like okay this is what I'll do <laughs> so <clears throat> but I don't know if I'll be that lucky so and then I'll have to probably figure something out with the volume because this is probably so quiet <sighs> but, uh, so Proverbs chapter 22 says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. And so it is, you know, it makes me want to think automatically about how your reputation, basically, and, um, you know, it's like, obviously, we want to have a good reputation with God, right? We want to have, uh, we want to be on good grounds with God, but we want to be on a, a good reputation with other people, too, you know, and not burn bridges, and, um, you know, 
it just makes me think of one of the girls that I was talking to that was in prison not too long ago, and uh, I can think about a lot of people, even myself, but there's other people that are just continuing to burn bridges, and they don't care, you know, they're just living like they don't care, you know, what people think about them, even though they're doing wrong and committing crimes and stuff, it's like, you know, people aren't going to accept you for that, for being a liar and everything. Uh, you're not going to have a good name. And uh, when you have a good name, you know, it's easier to find work. It's easier to do a lot of things, to get help and stuff, because... People know that you're generally a good person and trustworthy, and so they want to help you. But, uh, anyway. The rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> just kind of, again, like the Lord's dominion over everybody. The Lord created everybody. And, uh, it's basically that the Lord is, is over everybody. A prudent man foreseeth the, the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. So it sounds good to be prudent, to hide from evil. Um, the simple don't simple-minded, the foolish, basically not the wise. It's like the opposite of the wise. Um, and so it, we see simple used, and it seems like a lot of times it's used kind of like a stupid, like, <laughs> or the foolish person. Um, but sometimes we can think of simple, too, as in contrast to extravagant or whatever um, I don't know that's let's just go on to the next one and it makes me think of the verse in Psalms too like King David talking about how he wouldn't even look upon evil and so you know obviously it was like hiding yourself from evil by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. By humility and fear of the Lord are riches. And so, you know, that could be taken in a spiritual manner, or it could even be blessed in a physical, material way. It's probably meant to be more uh, spiritual. You know, riches and riches don't always have to be you know, wealth or money or whatever, but uh, spiritual riches. Thorns and snares are in the way of the fro froward. He that do doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Makes me think about in Corinthians or one of those epistles, there's a, talks about the snare of the devil. And uh, other verses that just talk about how, you know, sin is a trap, basically. And train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And discipline is something we see a lack of today. I mean, I guess all throughout time, it just seems like, you know, I guess when you get older, you start to realize things more like that. There's a lot of bad parenting out there, and the children suffer because of it, and they grow up, and they become adult children. They become, you know, grown children, basically. So, the rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. He that's Soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. Let's 
I'm just thinking about verse 7 again, how the borrower is servant to the lender. So it's kind of like a warning, or it's kind of like letting you know that that's kind of a consequence. And, you know, it's probably it's better not to be a borrower, but, I mean, it's going to happen to everybody, I'm sure, in different ways. That will need help or whatever from somebody else, but... Um, Or it's like at least know like who you're getting help from or you know what the situation is. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. So it's good to be uh giving and you know <clears throat> when you bless bless others you'll be blessed yourself. Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out, yea, strife and reproach shall cease. He that loveth pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, and he overthroweth the words of the transgressor. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge. It's kind of the omniscience of the Lord, how he knows everything. Um, sees everything. The slothful man said, There is a lion without. I shall be slain in the streets. <clears throat> the slothful man saith, There is a lion without. I shall be slain in the streets. <laughs> so, uh, That's an interesting verse. It just makes me, I mean, it's saying that it's negative to be slothful, obviously. Saying basically, um, what, that he's not going to put up any fight or have any kind of plan or... Like, is that, like, basically just the equivalent of being slothful is, like, being slain by a lion? Like... <clears throat> kind of like how it said, um, it's better to, or it's like better to be killed by a bear to take her offspring or something and be killed by a bear than to be foolish. The mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. He that abhorred of the Lord shall fall therein. That almost makes it sound like, well, <laughs> a strange woman. It makes me think, well, like a strange woman's like a punishment. It makes me think about how the verses, how he said, like, a nagging wife is, is terrible and stuff. But, you know, I don't know if a strange woman is not, not supposed to be a wife. Or maybe it could be if it was uh, a bad wife. I don't know. But probably not. I mean, I know most people don't interpret a strange woman to be the wife. Uh, it's supposed to be, you know, like a temptress or whatever that... Uh, would seduce somebody to fornicate or whatever. You're not married. But it could also just be just a bad woman in general, whether she was your wife or not. Just, you know, having a bad woman in, a part in your life uh, and having to suffer that because, um, because of your ways. And it's like a consequence. I don't know. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Again, talking about correction. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. So basically saying, like, all children are going to have some, sorm some form of foolishness, and they're all going to have to be disciplined, basically, is what I get from that. He that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want.
that just makes me think of Robin Hood. <laughs> you know, the story of Robin Hood. How, um, the tax collectors and stuff, I guess. Bow down thine ear, and hear the words of the wise, and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee, they shall withal be fitted in thy lips. That thy trust may be in the Lord, I may have known to thee this day, even to thee. Have not I written to thee excellent things in the counsels and counsels and knowledge that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee? Rob not the poor because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted and the gate. For the Lord will plead their cause and spoil the soul of those that spoiled them. Make no friendship with an angry man, and a furious man thou shalt not go. Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. Be not thou one of them that strike hands, or of them that are sureties for debts. And I've never gotten that, people that like to fight all the time. <clears throat> but the Bible's clearly against that. If thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bed from under thee? Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. <laughs> that makes me think of all the craziness that's going on today where they're just taking down the statues and everything. I bet there's a lot of Christians out there that use that verse and preach sermons and on that. Remove not the ancient landmark which their fathers have set. But that means, you know, that doesn't mean any kind of a physical statue or anything like that. That just means, you know, like what he's been saying, not to forsake the way of your parents, not to forsake the way of God, not to forsake what you've been taught. So that's the landmark is just, um, you know, the way that the people of God have been raised. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Okay, well, that was Proverbs 22. As always, a lot of stuff there, but... I'm going to try to add an intro and outro to this video through my normal editor. And uh, we'll see how long it takes to upload and everything. So that's it, guys. And hopefully I'll do more today if everything runs smoothly. So God bless.